Hi, I'm Bob. Let's finish the exercises for section 3.4, Constraint Consumer Choice today. I use the textbook Microeconomics, Theory and Applications with Calculus, the fifth edition by Professor Jeffrey Pilov. You can find the link of an introductory microeconomics course in the description below. Let's get started. Let's solve exercise 4.11. The consumer's utility function is as follows. Q1 is chocolate candy and Q2 is slices of pie. If the price of a chocolate bar P1 is $1, the price of a slice of pie P2 is $2, and Y is $80, what is the consumer's optimal bundle? We use the shortcut approach to solve the problem, that is, to combine the tangency condition and the budget constraint to find the interior optimal bundle of goods that maximizes the consumer's utility. The utility function is the Cobb Douglas form. In the first step, we find the tangency condition. At the optimal choice, the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation. The former is the negative marginal utility ratio, and the latter is the negative price ratio. We obtain the tangency condition equation 1. In the second step, we combine it with the budget constraint and solve for the optimal bundle of the two goods. Let's solve exercise 4.12. In 2005, Americans bought 9.1 million home radios for $202 million and 3.8 million home theater in a box units for $730 million. Suppose the average consumer has a Cobb Douglas utility function and buys these two goods only. Given the results in solved problem 3.7, estimate a plausible Cobb Douglas utility function such that the consumer would allocate income in the proportions actually observed. For Cobb Douglas utility function, U equals Q1 to the power alpha times Q2 to the power 1 minus alpha. The interior solution is as follows. The budget share of Q1 is alpha and the budget share of Q2 is 1 minus alpha. Suppose Q1 is the home radius and Q2 is the home theater in a box unit. Based on the observation, alpha is estimated as 0 0.217 and 1 minus alpha is 0 0.783. So the estimated Cobb Douglas utility function is as follows. Let's do exercise 4.13. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, in 2018, average annual consumer expenditures were $1,329 on education, $4,612 on health care, and $2,913 on entertainment. Given that a person buys only these three goods, estimate a person's Cobb Douglas utility function for these three goods. The result from the solved problem 3.7 in the textbook can be extended to three goods. For Cobb Douglas utility function, U equals Q1 
q1 to the power alpha times q2 to the power beta times q3 to the power 1 minus alpha minus beta. The budget share of q1 is alpha, the budget share of q2 is beta, and the budget share of q3 is 1 minus alpha minus beta. We observe the expenditures on the three goods. So we can estimate alpha, beta, and 1 minus alpha minus beta. The estimated Cobb Douglas utility function is as follows. Let's solve exercise 4.14. David's utility function is u equals q1 plus 2 times q2. Describe his optimal bundle in terms of the price of q1 and q2. It is a linear utility function for perfect substitutes. We draw the indifference curve budget constraint diagrams to help solve the problem. The indifference curves are straight lines for the linear utility function. The slope of the indifference straight lines is minus 1 over 2. We compare the slopes of the indifference curve and the slope of the budget constraint to find the optimal consumption bundle. In case 1, if the indifference curves are steeper than the budget line, then the optimal bundle E is at the corner of the budget line that hits the Q1 axis. By the highest indifference curve rule, the optimal bundle is on the highest indifference curve that touches the budget constraint. The consumer spends his entire income on Q1. In case 2, if the indifference curves are flatter than the budget line, the optimal bundle E is at the corner of the budget line that hits the Q2 axis. The consumer spends all his income on Q2. In case 3, if the slope of the indifference curves happens to be equal to the slope of the budget line, then the consumer is willing to buy any bundle on the budget line, in the interior, or at either corner. Let's do exercise 4.15. The consumer likes spare ribs, Q1, and fried chicken, Q2. His utility function is U equals 10 times q1 to the power 2 times q2. His weekly income is $90, which he spends on ribs and chicken only. In part A, if he pays $10 for a slab of ribs and $5 for a chicken, what is his optimal consumption bundle? Show his budget line, indifference curve, and optimal bundle E1 in a diagram. We use the shortcut approach to find the optimal bundle that maximizes his utility, subject to his budget constraint. In the first step, we find the tangency condition. At the point where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line, the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation. The former equals the negative marginal utility ratio while the latter equals the negative price ratio. So we have the tangency condition equation 1. In the second step, we combine it with the budget constraint to find the optimal bundle, which is q1 equals 6 and q2 equals 6. The diagram shows the budget line, the indifference curve, and the optimal bundle e1. 
In Park B, suppose the price of chicken doubles to ten dollars. How does his optimal consumption of chicken and ribs change? Show his new budget line and optimal bundle E two in your diagram. Suppose P two is ten dollars. The marginal rate of transformation changes to minus one. The marginal rate of substitution is unchanged, so the tangency condition equation becomes Q two equals Q one over two. Combining it with the new budget constraint gives the new consumption bundle. Let's do exercise four point sixteen. N's utility function is u equals q one times q two over the sum of q one and q two. Solve for her optimal values of q one and q two as a function of p one, p two, and y. We use the shortcut approach to find the optimal bundle. In the first step, we find the tangency condition equation. At the optimal point, the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation. We can obtain the tangency equation one. In the second step, combining it with the budget constraint gives the solution of the optimal bundle. It is a quasi-linear utility function. From previous exercises, we know that the solution could be interior or at the corner. Of the budget line that hits the Q1 axis, without purchasing any Q2. Suppose that the interior solution exists. In the first step, we use the tangency condition to obtain the Q1 star. Substituting it into the budget constraint gives the Q two star. To ensure Q two star is positive, the parameter a must be smaller than an expression containing income and prices. Under these circumstances, the consumer purchases both goods. Otherwise. He has a corner solution at the Q1 axis. He spends his entire income on Q1. Let's solve exercise 4.18. Given the utility function, what is the expenditure function? The expenditure function is the relationship showing the minimum expenditures. Necessary to achieve a specific utility level for a given set of prices, it is a function of the prices and the given level of utility. In the first step, we write down the expenditure expression. It equals price times quantity for the two goods, where the quantity is the optimal value. That is the minimum expenditure. In the second step, we try to find the optimal values of QC and QM as a function of prices and the given level of utility. We can use the Lagrangian method. The Lagrangian function is as follows. Here are the three first-order conditions.
The first two first order condition equations relate QC to QM. Using it and the third first order condition or the utility function, we can obtain the quantities of the optimal bundle of the two goods. In the third step, we substitute the optimal quantities into the expenditure expression to obtain the expenditure function. Let's solve exercise 4.19. RJ and Florentia each have a budget of $80 per month to spend on downloaded music tracks and live concert tickets. At the initial prices, RJ consumes both goods, but Florentia buys only downloaded music and does not go to live concerts. Now the price of live concerts falls, so that RJ's utility must increase, and Florentia's utility may increase or stay the same but cannot fall. When the price of live concerts falls, RJ can afford the original bundle and has extra money to purchase more goods. By the more is better assumption, he will be better off. As the graph shows, he's on a higher indifference curve and his utility increases. For Florentia, she may have a linear utility function and her indifference curves are straight lines. If the slope of the budget line is flatter than the indifference curves, then she has a corner solution of only purchasing music. As shown in the left panel, her optimal corner solution is unchanged after the fall in the concert price. If the new budget line is deeper than the indifference curves, then her optimal choice will be on a higher indifference curve and enjoy more utility, as shown in the right panel of the graph. Thank you so much for solving the exercises with me today. See you tomorrow for the next chapter. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.